Elements in the DOM receive various types of events. There is a click event, scroll event, error. There are so many events and these events have a particular default behavior in the DOM which is called event bubbling. In this video, I'll be simplifying with examples what the concept of event bubbling is. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I simplify the web. On my channel, I simplify languages like CSS, JavaScript, HTML, different web technologies. So if these are videos you'd love to see more of and you haven't subscribed yet, then please hit the subscribe button. First, what is event bubbling? Event bubbling in JavaScript is a term in the DOM where the event an element receives is bubbled or you can say transmitted to its parent and ancestors elements upward in the DOM tree. So an element receives an event and that event goes all the way up in the DOM tree and is also received by the ancestors of that element. So what do I mean? In this simple example, I'm going to explain what event bubbling means. This is the code here. I have the body element, which is a parent of a div. The div is a parent of a span and the span is a parent of the body. In. and here I have a style where for the body I give it the background color of pink the div has a background color of green and the span has a background color of blue which you can see here so this is the button the blue is the span the green is the div and the pink is the body so how does event bubbling happen here now if I click this button you can think of it like I'm actually clicking this span also because the button is in the span so if I click the button the span will also receive a click event and because this span is also in the div which is the background color of green that means just clicking the button alone the span is going to receive a click event the button is also going to receive a click event and because all these elements are inside the body it's almost like we are actually clicking the body also so that same event would be transmitted to the body element and what this causes is that even if we are clicking this button here that says click me it means we can also handle click events on the span which is the blue we can also handle click events on the div which is the green and we can also handle click events on the body, which is the pink. And I'm going to show you this with an example. So let's go back to the code. I'm just going to give this element some IDs. So the div has an ID of div, the span has an ID of span, and the button has an ID of button. And I'll come back here and I refresh, and then I'm going to run some code in the browser console. I'm going to paste this code here. And what this code means is that we use the get element by tag name to get the body element. We assign that to the body variable. For the div, we use the div's ID. For the span, we use the span's ID. For the button we use the button's id and then we have this event listeners where the body has an event listener of click where you say console.log body was clicked the div has an event listener of click where you say div was clicked the span has an event listener of click also where we log to the console span was clicked and the button has an event listener of click where we say the button was clicked so watch what happens now i'm going to minimize this a little if i click on the body you see we have body was clicked because the body receives the click event and we already have a function that handles it by logging body was clicked to the console now remember the div is the green background if i click on the div watch what happens we have div was clicked but because that event was also bubbled to the body we also have body was clicked because we have an event listener for the body also watch what happens when i click the span the span is the blue when i click on it you can see span was clicked because that event was bubbled to the div we have div was clicked and because that event was also bubbled to the body we have body was clicked and finally watch what happens when i click on the button when i click on the button starting from here you can see button was click event bubble to the span span was click event bubble to the div div was click event bubble to the body body was clicked and this is the case of event bubbling because this button receives an event that event is bubbled all the way up in the dom tree to the button's ancestors and those ancestors can also handle that event this is the default behavior in the dom in browsers but what if you do not want this how do you stop event bubbling from happening then this is where you use the stop propagation method so for the button I'm just going to add another event listener and I'll still give this a click and then for the handling function because this function receives the event argument here and then I'm going to call event.stop propagation and I'm going to execute this method and I'm going to close this button. Oops. Okay, I can add um, another bracket to the end here. What the stop propagation method does is that it prevents the event from bubbling to its ancestors. So right now, if I click the body, you still see body was click. If I click the div, div was click, body was click. The event is still bubbling. If I click the blue, span was click, div was click, body was click. But watch what happens when I click the button. You only have button was clicked and that event doesn't bubble to the ancestors. So that's the function of the stop propagation method. Sometimes when you are building applications, you may not want events to bubble so this is where this function comes in handy and I'll leave a link to a video that goes in more detail of the stop propagation method you can check the video description for that link if you enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe and also turn on notifications for more concepts I'll be explaining in JavaScript